Virgo, welcome to your 2022 reading. We are going to talk a lot of astrology here and uh, we'll see what cards randomly come out. We're going to start with some main energies and uh, for those of you who want to go deeper into relationships, romance, career and money, health and healing, I will have a subtopic so you can click ahead for that. Um, but I do like us to talk about this main energy because it really is directing everything that falls under those headings. And it's interesting to see, you know, when these cards reappear again in those um, those subtopics. But I got to remind you that this is probably most applicable to Virgo risings. OK, if you don't know what your rising sign is, you need to like go on a free website and get a free natal chart and you could watch your sun moon rising sign um and you know take it with a grain of salt take what applies discard what doesn't because it's not a private reading right so do not treat it like a private reading <laughs> a private reading would be the most accurate and by the way i do those if you want to come to me for that i'm running a special forgot to tell the sagittarians about it 60 minutes for a hundred dollars and um it is as unique as your natal chart, as unique as a fingerprint. That's how you get the most accurate detail is to get the private. But that said, we're going to see what comes out. And uh, remember, you know, um, when we talk about astrology, you know, there's fa that's faded energy, but you've got free will how you want to respond to it. What I like about talking about the astrology is it helps us to know what we're being energetically supported with this year and what we're not. And so for you, um, you got a lot of support with um, getting, you know, forward movement in, in ninth and um, eighth house matters where your north node is going to be this year. And that has to do with higher learning, higher beliefs, long distance travel. Uh, that's ninth house and eighth house has to do with shared resources, sex, intimacy, other people's money. I, I'm going to get deeper into that, but it's just going to be easier because this is a year where a lot of the fixed signs are going to be triggered. And so... Breathe a sigh of relief because you're a mutable sign, right? So is um, Gemini, Sagittarius, Pisces. Um, the mutable signs are going to fare better than, say, the fixed signs. Those are having it the roughest. Um, and the fixed signs are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. So um, I, the mutable signs, I think, are going to be able to flex and flow a little bit better. By the way, you might want to watch Pisces because um, that's your opposite sign. There's a lot of mirroring going on. So you might get something off of the Pisces video. Um, but just know that things are going to be a little easier for you this year. And if there are difficulties that come up, it's probably going to have to do with other people's struggles. Um, with exception to, you know, your long-term relationships. Even though those should even go a little bit easier this year. But going back to the North Node in your ninth and 8th house as well. Um, that's going to be good for those of you who are students or you're working in academia. It's also good if you work for a global corporation or you're doing work that reaches a global audience, even if it's just through publishing your work online. And as an added bonus, this is really good for long distance travel, not so much short distance, um, but it could also be very helpful for doing any kind of spiritual work and faith building. But that does put your south nodes this year in the third and, you know, second houses. So there might be something that you're having to release in terms of what you thought was a fact. And you are now realizing there's a higher truth. Something about your faith is, is um, needing to be restored because maybe, maybe the facts don't support something that you believed in in the past. So it could be a realignment of what you believe in and optimism. Um, and Ninth House is very Sagittarian as well. So a Sagittarian might be relevant to you in the way that you are directing your energy this year. But again, that puts third house in the South Node. Um, so maybe there's a Gemini in your life that you are releasing. And then later on when the nodes shift into your eighth, North Node eighth, um, it, you are probably, um, let me say, if you are single, from the shift is going to occur April to mid-July, by the way, when the North Node goes into your 8th house, South Node 2nd. These are money houses. These have to do with sh uh, personal resources versus shared resources. And so if you are single, I will say that there could be um, 
a greater focus on intimacy on a sexual and emotional level. If you're coupled, this is going to be good for working on sexual and emotional intimacy in your relationship. But yeah, the money aspect is definitely there. So um, family and shared resources, you know, have more of an emphasis during the second, during April through mid-July, like I said. And that could, during that time frame, put an increased focus on your money, generational wealth, government taxes. It's a lot of mine versus, mine versus their, there's dynamics. It's these themes where what, is yours maybe takes a back seat to what is theirs or at least it might seem that way okay um be careful for you know of, of power issues and shadow aspects of relationships surfacing for resolution during this time and that's going to highlight a need within yourself that you might be seeing mirrored in your relationship with others or they're maybe bringing it up to you during that time now, in late July, early August, uh, you know, everybody's concerned about this triple conjunction between Mars, Uranus, and the North Node. It's happening in Taurus, again, in your ninth house. So it is suggesting that perhaps there will be some kind of big move um, or a long-term trip or some kind of major uh, shakeup with your beliefs that are happening because of issues going on in the world that are in some way challenging your worldview and it might be that during this time you seek a higher power or you rethink like i said what you've put your faith into august is going to be a very life-changing month for everybody collectively but specifically for you in that ninth house it's most impacting your beliefs and your worldview now i see there's something you don't like and it might have to do with an air sign aquarius libra gemini or a scorpio Might be somebody that you have partnered with. Um, somebody does not like what they're being offered, okay? And I think that there is a decision here. Uh, and, and I'm getting, I'm hearing swift. It's a very swift, logical, nope. Nope, I don't want that. I don't like what you're offering me. And I'm also seeing with this decision, there is separation. There's a cutting off of something. And it might have to do with a partnership. And this is really transformative this is a very plutonic energy very intense emotional energy bringing about change death or rebirth cycles in your life having to do with your plans and possibly yes who you're partnering with something is making you apathetic and dissatisfied and out of that emotional state you make a swift logical head-based decision i'm cutting this out both of these energies i'm cutting this out i don't like what this is, is offering me I'm going to make different plans and you you separate yourself from it and it's like it's very uh it's very big okay um and i'm just now getting a little bit nosy i i want to know like what what's getting cut out here what's getting cut out here what's getting cut out that is a sexual union there I don't know, somebody, they might have had two partners, two sexual partners, because I'm seeing two rods over there, and this is a sexual union, and somebody does not like emotionally what they're being given in that sexual union, so there's a sexual union getting cut out. Uh, not for everybody, but hey, we had to go there, all right? Um, let me pop that back in and see if it comes out again. And maybe we get more information on it. Let's talk about where you have good luck and fortune this year, and hopefully we'll get another storyline, a positive one on that note. Um, you've got Jupiter and Pisces in your 7th house this year, then later Jupiter will go into Aries in your 8th house. So from January through May, when Jupiter is in your 7th house, while Venus is in your 2nd, house um, this is going to be really good for uh, paying things off if you're you know in a business partnership or in a marriage partnership really good for getting things paid off and yeah it also might be that funds come through a partner and i, I am seeing partnering here all right um 
And if it's not funds, then it might be possessions or valuables in some way. Uh, this is boosting your sense of self-worth, even if that's just on an emotional level. Just be careful of overspending because with Jupiter, that's easily, what's easily gained can be easily lost. <laughs> What's challenging you this year? Well, you've got Saturn in your fifth house and your sixth house. So there could be some kind of creative blocks or blockages towards pleasure. It might have to do with children, dating, romance. In some way, that's kind of an issue. Um, whatever challenges come up in this area of your life, be mindful of karmic lessons. Because Saturn is about karma. There is a lesson here with a restriction and limitation in this area of your life. So... Um, if you're being a t taken a task, um, in some respect, it is really uh, for the purpose of you gaining more maturity in, in this area having to do with, you know, children, fun dating, romance. Well, it looks like there's some kind of stalemate here with a um, single woman might have a soul tie to her. Could be a Capricorn uh, for some of you. Um, I'm seeing Virgo as well with that Nine of Pentacles, of course. None of those signs might be relevant, but regardless of sign, I'm seeing that there's some type of, I'm hearing gridlock with this single woman, and there's some kind of toxic energy here. And again, if this is about money, it looks like somebody, why am I, you know what, I, my eyes are playing tricks on me again. I saw the nine of pentacles, but it is six of pentacles. So this is about give and take. And now what I'm seeing is somebody doesn't want to, there's an issue of give and take in the relationship. You're at a stalemate with somebody about this, okay? Um, and it might be because somebody feels like they don't have control over their money or that they're being controlled through money. It might be um, like if this is a separation in a marriage, there are some kind of tie to this relationship like they're separated but they're still bound to that person um, there's some kind of family or marital or legal tie that is controlling the give and take in the relationship yet there's a stalemate with it not for everybody i'm trying to think of my virgo friends that are not married this might translate more into um late april mid-july when saturn goes into that sixth house and has you taking on new responsibilities and that has you going through some changes in your thinking and maybe your daily routine and the way that you're dealing with work and your health habits because i'm seeing some kind of uh, toxicity here with a give and a take now i'm wanting to get nosy so I'm going to pull out my shadow deck. And I want to know what is this devil card about? What's the toxicity here? Oh, it's getting messy. Let's try again. Please show me. There it is. Mm. Lust. I don't know if you saw me when I was trying to pick up that card, but it didn't want to pick up at first. It was like it wanted to stay like that. And I was having trouble at first picking it up like it didn't want to be seen. That's it right there. There's some kind of, um, and here's another one that just flew out. Pitiful. Really? Anything more? Oh, there's a lot talking here. My God, here we go. Void. Somebody's empty. Is this why there's something wrong with the give and take? Like, I can't give to this? I'm sorry, I can't give to this. I just got in somebody's business. And I wasn't even trying. <laughs> Well, maybe I was. <laughs> okay. All right, let's keep it moving. Um, in October, we're going to have the last Saturn-Uranus square that is going to impact the sixth house placement. So this is pushing you to attend to any health matters. I'm going to talk more about this in the health and healing segment. Um, but just suffice it to say, there might be unresolved conflicts that may happen between you and subordinates. For some of you, though, um, if you're the subordinate, then it's going to be between you and a boss. And again, I'll talk more about that in the career and money segment. But the main advice here is that I really think you need to guard yourself from um, burnout in your day to day life. You need to diligently um, replenish any kind of um, energetic reserves that are depleted. 
um, because if you don't, this is likely going to bring up some kind of um, issue that maybe you had in the past. It's an um, outstanding health issue that just gets brought up again, like a relapse, I hate to say. Um, and again, it has to do with your everyday life. Um, something that maybe last year you were able to sweep under the rug, but at this point, resistance is futile. This energy is going to push you to deal with it by fall, by October. So, you know, my advice is to be um, as proactive as possible. And at the foundation, well, sweet Jesus, there it is. Yeah, somebody's cheating, okay? Somebody is having an affair with the three of chalices in reverse. And I'm going to tell you if somebody's not having an affair, well, it might be an emotional affair where they've not physically had sex with a person, but they're sexting, they're, um, you know, like somebody's shoulder to cry on or something like that, but there's some emotional intimacy or emotional betrayal. For some people, it could be like um, flirting that has just gone, it's too far gone, like somebody just went too far with the flirting. Uh, maybe they were drunk. I mean, this could be excessive partying and drinking as well. But, I mean, honestly, given these cards with Lust and the Devil card, like, there's some kind of soul tie here. And it's a sexual energy. And I'm seeing the cheating over there as well. And I told you, I saw two, um, this about plans of partnership. And then we, we clarified that with the, um, it never came out again. But it's a sexual, there's so much sexual energy all over this. And if you are like, well, that ain't me, because I have a Virgo friend who is like totally like, but she's an Aries rising, so she should probably go watch the Aries reading. But I mean, yeah, if this is not resonating with you, it, it's something having to do with your, yeah, there it is. That, that's what was clarifying that. It's something having to do with your, um, your passions, all right? Yeah, I'm just, I'm trying to look at the spread and, and look at how would this relate to somebody who's single. Um, it could be that you want to partner with someone, but you don't like what's being offered to you. And you're being held back from partnering with a person that you want because there's some kind of soul tie. There's something uh, binding you. I'm going to move on. That's some deep stuff. And it will mean different things for different people. But um, it is seeming nonetheless. Let's move on to uh, relationships and romance. And maybe we will get more, you know, more information. I'm going to say, you know, this is a year that you're probably going to desire love more this year. And the good news is that with the energy, you're pretty likely to get it. All right. Um, although you might have some external circumstances going on that are diminishing your romantic life. Yeah, I mean, if you still got one foot in the door of another relationship and you can't get out because you're bound to it, but you're trying to separate yourself from it, but it's intense, you know, like, I see somebody here is like, yeah, I just don't want that little cup. I want... Right. Where's the Ace of Chalices when you need it? Um, it's not here. So it's a bit lackluster. And somebody's not totally opening up to something. Because again, there's something maybe shady going on. It might be something as simple as someone hanging on to a fantasy. Oh dear, there we go. Oh, come on now. Virgo. All right. The Tower card in this deck is definitely like, there's definitely been some kind of betrayal. Look at the threes there again. There was a three. Three-party situation, you know, and and then this person over here, where'd he go? Did I bury it? I sure did. No. This person over here is like, I don't know, should I go with that partner or that partner? Someone's getting cut out. One of the partners getting cut out. And here we go again with the three. This is like some kind of betrayal. Because, right, apparently he's not in that close with her, right? <laughs> he thought he was in tight with her, but he's not. And somebody is maybe hanging on to some kind of fantasy land or illusion that, um, that they can just keep on with this relationship. Oh, dear. 
so there's some kind of emotional disconnect going on. Um, again, uh, somebody maybe checked out of the building. If it's an emotional affair, like I saw over here, they don't, they haven't filed a divorce or they're not, they're not going through with a divorce or something like that. But in their mind and in their heart, they're already divorced. They already left the building long time ago. Okay. And this hangman in reverse is like, well, this is dead, but we're just going to stay here. We're just going to stay here and keep carrying on with this like it ain't a rotting corpse. I know that was kind of gruesome, right? But y'all can handle it. Um, yeah, these external circumstances that are diminishing your romantic life. Um, well, somebody might be, you know, patiently enduring all of this to move beyond the dissatisfaction of these moments. I see somebody emotionally dissatisfied. Like, I don't know, though, are you getting, are you patient to a fault? Are you, like, enduring and just, like, going through the motions? I'm getting, like, I, the robotic card didn't come out here, but that's what I'm seeing in my mind, that there's somebody is just, like, I'm hearing now, I'm hearing it's a charade. It's a charade. Where is that card? It just popped in my head, even though it didn't pop out of the deck. I want to find it. There it is. Just going through the motions, not feeling it, not feeling it. Patient to a fault, because really what's going on is somebody's already checked out and left the, the building on this relationship. And it's, there's not wholeness here. There's not integrity. There's, I'm hearing duplicity. There's lies. There's betrayal. Okay. The good news is that there is a lot of energy this year um, to help relax and bring more of a comforting tone to relationships, even that have had long outstanding disagreements and arguments. Um, you might find yourself being, again, patient to a fault suddenly, but maybe it's because you just don't give a damn anymore. Somebody doesn't like, I don't care. <laughs> All right, I'm, I've already exited the building, so I don't really, I don't really have anything in on this, and I'm being brought back to this as well, like, and <laughs> unimpressed. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> All right. So in January with Venus retrograding Capricorn in your fifth house, um, this might leave you feeling like maybe some fun and pleasure in your life is, is taking a back seat. And with Neptune also in that seventh house having to do with marriage and committed partnerships, well, that's where you got your blind spot. Wherever Neptune is, is telling you where your blind spot is right now. You're not seeing something clearly in your relationships, maybe yeah, your long-term committed partnerships, um, maybe a bit fogged in during this time. So you might, it could be that you're starting to question your partner or maybe their, or the commitment that you're having, um, or they are you. Be aware of the tendency to go to either extreme of illusion versus delusion. Try to be grounded here as much as possible with these seventh house matters. Because you're likely not seeing things clearly about your relationships, your long-term committed partnerships. And overall, well, that just passed out. Yeah, this might be a habit. Oh, there's that dang chow for a chalices again. Look at that. Same card, different deck. But this is more, in this deck, this is more of an energy of, um, it is a pattern in your relationships, again, where you're going through the motions and it's keeping you in a state of paralysis, I don't know, it was like analysis paralysis, but it's just like, come on. Um, if you don't get out of this comfort zone or this habitual way of thinking, living, whatever, um, you're not going to be able to move on and move forward. Um, I think overall on January with this Mercury retrograde and Capricorn in your fifth house, it is going to cause you to withdraw some more. Some of you might lack confidence or certainty in matters of the heart because you're going through a lot of deep transformations in your love life and definitely at the beginning of this year with that Venus retrograde, but it is giving you a chance to reevaluate current past love experiences and then maybe some of you reliving some experiences maybe that are reminiscent from your past um, that are helping you with the healing process of this. And with a knave of swords might be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini, 
comes in with some biting words, um, you know, and I got to say, listen, I'm telling you, it's an intense transformative process. There's that Pluto energy there um, bringing about a lot of change and it's maybe coming through what people are saying or what they're thinking or, but I do see it maybe coming between a partner, you know, two partners. Um, if you are coupled and there's another card that just came out seven of wands so i see a lot of um energy indicating doubts suspicions um that really need to be there's and i'm hearing hesitation with that seven of wands there's some kind of pushback uh, that's coming up in the communication it might have to do with an air sign um possibly someone under 30 or somebody just very young at heart you know but i do get the sense that you might be caught up in this pattern of emotionally disconnecting from people and there's also a pattern of communicating in a way that engenders doubts and suspicions in people um or them towards you you know it's uh, something that you need to kind of maybe heal from and, and work through in your life. Um, it could be that, you know, Venus retrograde has a lot of us reflecting on our past, love lives, our exes. Um, you might go back to an ex during this time, or at least you're thinking about it, or them, you, okay? It's a collective energy we're all dealing with. Um, if you were to go back to an ex, it's probably not going to be something that happens very suddenly. It will probably happen during the course of the year. For others, um, you're not going back to the ex. You are just reconnecting with feelings from your past and maybe reconciling those feelings within yourself. If you're single during this Venus retrograde that's happening at the beginning of the year, I think it will open up lines of communication, um, which will allow you to get to know that person better. Although I am seeing with the cards here that, you know, it might be a little rough going, okay, where, you know, you have some tough conversations about, I'm not really open to this, or I don't really trust this, or I, I, I have my suspicions, I have my doubts about this. And yeah, that might hurt, but it opens up, um, it opens the door uh, for you to have deeper conversations about why you don't, you know, why you have insecurities or mistrust in the relationship and how to rebuild it and restore it. So yeah, it can be used positively, but be aware that in, from the get-go could be very biting at first. But again, I'm hearing disarm. Somebody needs to disarm somebody in the conversation. Um, and I'm hearing de-escalate and it's almost like you need to talk them down. And that's how, again, I'm in a flow and I'm getting that for somebody and I, you're going to have to pray about it okay but some of you maybe in your communication skills when you come up with against these biting words with someone you need to you need to learn how to disarm them because I don't know if you're dealing with somebody who has weaponized their words they're saying stuff to throw verbal daggers it's you or the other person but there needs to be a learning and a practice of the art of verbally disarming and de-escalating um, yourself and others in these these verbal conflicts okay so if you are totally single you know in january i think that it's going to be a time where um you can talk like i said to get to know other people better and if you're not talking to anyone during this time um it's good for reevaluating the kind of relationship that you want and i think by may you're going to have a lot more romantic possibilities opening up for you that have deeper involvements so my advice is that, yeah, if you're single, uh, the first, you know, few months of this year, um, use, use that time to prepare by practicing self-care and working on any outstanding relational wounds and trying to get yourself more in alignment with what you truly value, okay? If you are committed during this time, uh, you know, in January with the retrograde, um, it's going to require adjustment in order for you to find understanding. Um, otherwise, up until May, it's going to be a very positive time, even favorable for deepening a commitment if you are in one, um, particularly February and March, really good for deepening a commitment. And, you know, as I said that, we got the Ace of Chalices, which is, my gosh, it's like new love. Holy crap. And um, 
it's opening up emotionally, having a lot of emotional vulnerability. Love it. But why now we have two of wands in reverse, sweet Jesus. Okay, so you had the ace of wands showing a new sexual union. You had, now you have ace of two aces, new partnership for some of you. But that two of wands in reverse, remember, we saw it in the upright in the general reading. So is it like some of you are having some delays in moving this partnership forward and it might be miscommunication or you're trying to draw near to them, but there is a distance issue. And I have to warn you that there might also be some fear of somebody fully uniting with another person, okay? Um, but again, I'm seeing the opportunity to heal this on an emotional level and to work through it. But it's going to be through um, offering that cup, all right? And I, and I complained. I complained about this cup here. It's funny, I mentioned that earlier with these two. I was like, "Who? I don't want that. I want my Ace of Chalice. Well, there it is. It finally came in. Um, let me say also in April with Venus and Jupiter in your seventh house, it is possible that there is some dreamy romance could totally develop in April. If you're single, it will come out of nowhere seemingly. If you're coupled, it's probably um, a partner is going to become more appealing to you. Um, especially, you know, maybe if they lost their appeal, like you lost that, like, I don't, it, it, like you, you, something fell out of favor with them and suddenly they become more desirous to you. Okay. Um, also again, for those of you who are coupled, really good time to get pregnant is in April when Venus and Jupiter go in your seventh house, but I'm seeing really beautiful energy here. The only difficulty I'm seeing is a breakdown of communication, delays, um, and it is something going with a distance issue of trying to overcome uh, distance issues. All right. And let's see at the foundation you have two of swords in reverse. Wow. Okay. That's like kind of another synchronicity. Where do we see that before? Um, we had that two of swords show up right there and now it's in reverse. So some of you have, um, you know, there, there's some stuck energy around you. I mean, I even see that here with the hangman. Um, but again, going back that, that to that two of swords, some of you are just not opening up to something. Maybe you're in, unclear or there's indecision. And it might be because somebody feels like the options that they're being presented with are not favorable or not wanted. And again, if I go back to that hangman reverse, because it's a similar energy, it's it's again this energy of somebody hanging on to a fantasy or very rigid thinking, or they're stalling, they're putting something off, and I'm seeing it from beginning to end here. Why are they stalling? Why are they putting something off? I am almost getting like there's a fear of the unknown, like what could happen, what could go wrong, or they're just trying to play it safe, or they're just living in the moment and not planning, okay? But I see love is out here on the table, but you're going to have to have some key conversations this year and work through some doubts and suspicions and hesitation in order to make way for that love to really flourish. And even then, there's a need to kind of work through um, some, I'm seeing emotional challenges on either end of this ace of chalices, like it's here, but you know, you've also got to work through this fear of the unknown and what could possibly go wrong in this desire to play it safe, Virgo. And y'all know y'all are earth sign and I'm not trying to throw any shade. I got a Taurus rising. So, you know, right there with you. I'm fixed, double fixed. So I get it. I get it. <laughs> but something is really nasty here. Like something is like with that tower. With a death card and the devil card, you have something pretty explosive going on. And um, I don't know, based on these cards, if... I'm getting a lot of stasis here with these cards, okay? And again, if this is a three-party situation, I'm seeing somebody's emotionally disconnected from one person and emotionally connected to another. 
yet it seems the person they're emotionally connected to, there's a problem here. There's some difficulty in really getting close to that person. And I'm seeing fears, doubts, suspicions all around this love connection. If you ask me, this, this looks like some drama, drama. Someone needs a private reading. It, it's, um, it's spicy to say the least. It really is. Let's move on to um, career and money because, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get something more positive and uplifting. Maybe we won't get, <laughs> maybe we won't get the devil card, right? Let's, let's not do that. Let's, let's be done with that. Okay, with career and money, I think overall with Saturn in your sixth house this year, there's going to be challenges with your work. At times, I think it's going to feel like, you know, maybe you're on a roller coaster ride. And you're going to be tempted to maybe change jobs because of that. But be careful when doing this because, you know, one bad move could prove quite disastrous. Um, I'm not saying, you know, that to scare you or to be complacent, but with Saturn there in that sixth house, the odds are not really in your favor of making a better move at this time, okay? Um, definitely make sure, you know, if you leave a job, make sure you've got another job lined up first before you leave the last one. And if you're going to leave, maybe you want to start that new job, just start off part-time to kind of feel it out, dig your toes in the pool, so to speak. Um, until you feel completely safe to leave that job. Ideally, the new job is going to alleviate pressures and it's going to allow you to have more of a work-life balance. And with Saturn in the sixth house, it's just not a time for you to take risks with your work. So just, yeah, I, I don't think ordinarily I need to tell a Virgo to be careful with their moves. I think you're going to scrutinize it. And that's going to work to your advantage, but just I'm, for some of you, right, like I have a girlfriend who's a Virgo with an Aries rising, and well, she's older now and more cautious now, but in her younger years, she let that Aries rising run her, and she would just take risks that maybe she wouldn't take now. And I'm just saying, some of you might have some fire in your chart where you just like pop off, like I'm out of here. And then with Saturn there in that sixth house, it just doesn't quite come together the way you're hoping. I'm just trying to protect y'all if at all possible. Whatever you decide, know that, I, that you know, having excellent communication so, skills is probably going to get you through the hard times. And y'all can definitely do it. You know, Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Y'all y'all are smart. But we got seven of pentacles in reverse. Like you're not putting, um, you're not putting work into something anymore. And it might be something from your past next to six of chalices in reverse. It's almost like you are, like you're really, that was the wrong card. You're really holding yourself back from something. You're very self-protective about something here with your money, your resources. Because with the world card in reverse, you have some unfinished business. Or you didn't get success in some respect. And it has you in this very frugal, um, self-protective role because of something from the past. And I don't think either... Either you're not invested in it anymore or you did put a you've put a lot into it and you didn't get what you wanted or thought you deserved out of it. So you're like, yeah, I'm just gonna hold off on that. With the five of wands in reverse, again, I feel that the reason why there might be some unfinished business or a lack of success or closure is because there was a disagreement. You couldn't get on the same page. There might have been a battle of wills with this other person. Um, the other person might be a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces. Might be somebody under 30. It might have to do with a child, okay? Um, I feel like somebody here also, the reason why there is unfinished business and a lack of closure and success is because there's somebody who's trying to avoid a fallout. Again, maybe having to do with a child or a water sign. And I'm also seeing a lot of emotional blockage here and a creative block as well and a lack of um, healing of a particular issue with that. That's the Ace of Chalices in reverse. Now we got more synchronicities popping up, right? So we had that come up before, this issue of opening up on an emotional level, but, uh, you know, in your romantic life, it's like there's there's some kind of connection there, but when it comes to money, and it might have to do with children, there's some kind of emotional blockage 
or repression, or you're trying to hold something back from happening, having to do with maybe sorrows or regrets or an apology. Um, and that's got you some emotional, outstanding emotional issue has you trying, it's almost like in order, in order for you to get closure to this, you're going to have to have a conflict, right? I'm flipping these cards to show you the counter message. In order for you to get closure on this issue, there's going to be a conflict. And somebody, the way they're going to handle that is to be very emotionally um, immature or insecure. But in reality, that looks like what's needed to get healing. But what I'm seeing so far, um, I, I feel like some of you, your family life, your emotional life, maybe your relational life is bleeding over into this for some of you might be a workplace dynamic, but it's a group dynamic. It might be a family again, where somebody's trying to avoid, um, if it's not avoid um, a disagreement, they're trying to avoid a reversal of fortune where things are like the tables are turned on them. Okay. But because of this unfinished business, there is some kind of blocked or repressed emotions, maybe depression, disappointment again around this child. I, honestly, I mean, I can give you my advice, but I mean, you, you have to live with it, right? So I, I don't see really positive stuff going on with money. And again, this is a card indicating possibly children, children, maybe family. It is affecting finances. And I think I said that in a general reading that somebody here is maybe feeling like they don't have control over their money or that they're being controlled with resources because they've got some tie to family. Um, over, over property or legal stuff, whatever. So I think communicating is going to get you through this. But again, somebody's going to have to unblock those emotions and make a decision to like mature and, you know, deal with it. Okay, so let me say if you're a business owner this year, it's probably going to be very status quo year um, where there's probably not a lot of chance for growth. But um, the areas where your business hasn't been doing well will probably um, start doing better. There is another page. So again, some of you might have a fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, somebody under 30. But again, I'm seeing some kind of impatient energy there where somebody's maybe demanding more out of another person and could be that there's a um, some conflict being created by this person um, if this is not about children or somebody under 30 this is a communication issue where somebody is struggling to communicate and I told you your key to getting through all of this is going to be through effective communication which you're well able to do Virgo I mean Absolutely. If you can't do it, nobody can, right? Um, but something's got your tongue here. Something's got your tongue here. And I think it's because you are trying to avoid a fallout. And look like you already had one on the table with that love reading. So anyway, maybe that was just enough for the year, right? <laughs> Okay, so those of you who are employees, um, again, another status quo year where things are likely going to stay the same. The upside of this is that I think you're going to feel more peace and stability. The downside is that you, it's probably unlikely that you're going to see a raise or a promotion. So my advice is that during this time, um, don't be aggressive about trying to go after that raise or promotion. Instead, focus on laying solid foundations so that you can get it in years to come. And regardless, um, I, let me say, you know, if you're discouraged to hear that, um, I'm going to say again, whether you're in business for yourself or you work for somebody else, um, just because I don't really see a lot of energy supporting growth in your active income, you should still have growth, financial growth um, in 2022, because the investments, especially in real estate, could really pay off for you this year. So if you are looking to invest, in 2022, um, it could be really a good time for you to do that. Obviously, get advice. 
maybe join an investment club or consider the counsel of a good friend who's very experienced with profiting in real estate, this would be helpful because likely going it alone is not going to end well. I have to advise you of that with the energy, but having some insight on these matters, um, maybe seeing it through the lens of another set of eyes, right? An experienced set of eyes is going to save you some from some losses and it will garner you some gains. The caution I wanna give you is that um, this is a year where expenses um, and long-term debts could um, become quite the burden. And so I think usually you're pretty good at handling this, but things could get very messy or sloppy this year. So the advice is to try to stay on top of your expenses and budgets as a regular practice, like be very disciplined. I see some of this like hoarding, greeting type of energy, like or greedy, I should say, energy um, with the Four of Pentacles. Um, I feel like the advice is don't get into this dark energy, this fearful clinging type of energy, but get into this, um, I'm hearing Capricorn, it like strategize, okay? Um, I'm hearing plan and I'm also hearing the word discipline. Okay. It's not about you controlling yourself and other people. It's about directing your financial efforts in a very strategic, disciplined way. All right. It's not coming from a place of lack or scarcity. It's coming from a place of abundance. Now, starting in August, uh, with Mars and Gemini in your 10th house, this is going to give you a lot of good opportunities with your career, with your status, and asserting yourself again through really helpful communications and ideas. Um, so take advantage of that. And especially with a Mercury retrograde, that is going to impact you because, you know, as a Virgo, you're ruled by Mercury. So definitely feeling that there's going to be a Mercury retrograde four times this year in January, May, and September. So these are really important months for you to analyze and review your ideas, what you're doing with your money and your resources and your possessions and your sense of self-worth. Okay, I got something there. Knight of Chalices, a water sign, Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces might be relevant, but I am seeing, um, wow, this is an odd message. Some of you, I don't know why, I'm being shown to, that you need to invest in art or you have an artistic friend. I don't know if it's an odd message. <laughs> if it's not for you, it's not for you, but I'm hearing it's for somebody um, investing in art or the arts. And I'm hearing um, perhaps it's an artistic friend that is really good at advising you on this, okay? And it's gonna help you, particularly during these months uh, where Mercury is in retrograde, January, May, September, December, um, that there's going to be some kind of advance in, in that respect or through that person. In March, you be careful with Mars square and Uranus in both your sixth and ninth houses. Um, because this is a time when your workload could get very hectic and you need to balance things out with some R&R, &R, rest and relaxation as much as possible. Try to replenish your energy, otherwise it's going to get drained and that will possibly, quite possibly, aggravate some uh, health problems. And this might be something that comes up that is reminiscent of last year's challenges that had to do with your day-to-day -day routines with work and with health. And by the way, if you're moving this year, um, it's likely going to happen for Virgo Risings. It will likely happen at the very beginning of 2022 until January 24th. So if you're going to move, it's likely going to happen the first 24 days of the year because Sagittarius will be in your fourth house during that time. Well, there's another moon card another moon card. Um, where did we see that before? Another synchronicity. Something is veiled. Something is, um, no, I'm, my bad. I'm thinking of the Sagittarius reading that I did. Um, my bad. Okay. So this might have to do again with a water sign, uh, Cancer, Pisces, maybe Scorpio, but particularly with a money reading, I am seeing some disappointment here some fears, some anxieties, and you having to work through that. And again, that might be the reason why there's some kind of really self-protective um, energy that I'm seeing with that four of pentacles in reverse. 
and not investing in something with a seven of, or you don't see that you're going to get anything out of it. So you're just really holding back. Some of you needing to work through, you know, money fears this year. Because again, I'm also seeing that it's, there's some overlap, I think, with family. And these money fears are causing you to not get closure in some area of your life that doesn't have to do with money. Like, it's almost going back to uh, this devil card where, you know, some kind of shadow aspect is is controlling you, like the money fears or the ties to the monetary ties to others are causing you to not get closure and healing on a, on a spiritual level, a relational level. It's a spillover effect. It's, it's an odd message, but this is what I'm getting for you. Let me see, you know, what the financial advice is for Virgos. 2022 please show me spirit all right holy crap release jealousy sagittarius just got that power of prayer some of you there's some emotional blockage and spiritual blockage i'm gonna say like are you have you gotten disconnected from spirit from your own spirituality or do you feel like you've been abandoned by spirit um, because there's, you're being asked to give the situation over to God. Um, maybe the insecurities, okay, or the fears. Um, be open to miracles, okay? Because I, I feel that there's some financial issue that is just bleeding over into every other aspect of your life, and I'm getting, I just heard arrested development. Arrested development, like you are being seized, It's a double card just stopping you right there. Like, are you putting your faith in this? Or are you putting your faith in this? Like, you know what? I'm going to let spirit heal the situation. Come whatever conflict may come. Yes, some people can't emotionally handle it. But let's deal with the truth. Let's deal with reality. Yes, it could get dicey. But I'm going to disarm them. We're going to, you know, defang the conversations here. And I'm going to get closure to an issue that's got me, had me under some kind of lockdown. With the release jealousy card, this is about you feeling that you don't have something that you need. And maybe getting frustrated by other people's successes. You might see other people getting ahead in an area that you aren't. Like I said, if it's a status quo year, whether you're in business for yourself or working for others, um, it's. I'm going to tell you intuitively, and this is not the cards, this is not the astrology, this is me talking intuitively. I really sense like spirit is allowing this energy because spirit is like, we don't want you focused on that right now. You got this emotional, spiritual stuff you need to work on. You need to get that devil out of your life, right? You need to stop letting this run your life. And like, that's your, that's your number one task this year is to deal with that devil. And if you want to sit there and be like, yeah, but my money, God's like, <laughs> yeah, about your plans. Let me show you mine. You know, it's like that saying, you want to hear God laugh at, uh, laugh at you. You want to hear God laugh, tell him your plans. <laughs> uh, story of my life. <laughs> story of my life. All right. Hang in there, Virgo. Let's see. Let's see what you need to work through this year. Okay. What do you need to work through this year? What do you need to heal from? Oh, my gosh. These came out. Deliverance. Oh, yeah. There we go. There's the devil. Get delivered from the devil. Shit. Something's got you under grips, okay? Inner truth, well, there we go. We go back to this power of prayer, meditation. What's the difference between those two? Prayer is talking to God. Meditation is listening to God. And there we have the turning point. Oh, yeah, 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 you got a turning point coming, okay? I'm sorry to say it ain't going to be pretty. The good news is, you know, it ends with life. <laughs> the bad news, 
it starts with a death, okay? Um, at the foundation, ooh, the marrying maiden. I'm telling you, some of you, um, if you are not married, if you are not in a toxic marriage, this is a family tie, all right? Um, I could go all through the cards again. I it is it's a, it's a family issue if not a marital issue. All right, three of cups in reverse again, showing that for me. Some of you are gonna separate from this person this year. There will be a separation. Um, some of you already checked out, left a building emotionally. Others of you, you are you're not quite there at this turning point yet. Okay. Um, you need to pray and meditate on how to facilitate this and how to get delivered from this. You need to, you know, figure out how to release things from your life. This is somebody being held captive, you know. Um, it is about a compromising situation, subordination, succumbing to seduction, manipulation, low self-esteem, okay? And is that what you need to get delivered from, Virgo? You need to come up with a fresh approach um, because there's some kind of obstruction here that you need to get free from and you need to find a solution. But again, probably going to require you to tune into your heart and listen to the wisdom of your heart and they get some insight from a moment of clarity, purity, and an intuitive knowing about what you need to do, really tapping into that higher consciousness. And getting beyond the illusion of things, right? The illusion here is that they're chained up. They can't walk away. But the reality is they could actually slip that off their neck pretty easily if they wanted to. They're there because of the temptation, because of the lust, right? This is a card about lust as well. Some of you, if you're like, this is not sexual lust for me. Okay, well, it's, it's monetary lust, all right? There's something that you are being tempted by to keep those chains on you. You won't leave the chains because you're getting some kind of satisfaction out of it. There's a void that's getting filled by you staying in this. There's a need that is being met by you keeping that chain on your neck. Even though you're dissatisfied with it. Um, the turning point here is... Starting a new cycle, regenerating, and it's inevitable that this is going to happen. And that goes back to that death card. It's just really confirming because that's a card of death and rebirth cycles, regenerating. Something is dead, Virgo, but it's time to breathe new life in it. It's time to get the shackles off. And I'm seeing it all over this reading. I hope this reading resonated for someone Remember, if you want a private reading, come to me. I would be happy to help. Love the Virgos. Um, and yes, know that until next time, I am wishing you all the best. Have a very good 2022. Be blessed.